Hey guys, I haven't done a video in a really long time. I've been doing a lot of knitting this year and I thought I'd do a really quick tutorial on how I knit with double pointed needles. I haven't done mittens in a really long time and I'm just getting started on that after not making any for years and years and years. And I'm just having so much fun with it and got all my mitten books out and thought I would just show you show you how I do my, my double pointed needle knitting. So with this pattern that I'm working on now, there's it's a very, very long cuff. Normally I would say the cuff should be done by now, but I've, I'm like three quarters of the way done. It's been hours and hours of just trying to get this going, but I just wanted to show you in case anyone feels a little intimidated by using these double pointed needles that it's not so bad. Um, I've tried all the different brands and my favorite are these signature, signature needle art ones. They've got some micro fine uh, texture on it that helps the stitches not fall off the needle when you've got the tips very close to the edge here. It kind of helps the stitches grip without being a drag on the yarn. So you can have productive knitting. It's not super uh, high tension knitting. Um, it still has some slickness but there's a little hint of uh, friction on these these needles. So basically I double wrap the yarn because I'm a loose knitter and I need to do that for my ribbing so I can get these nice even tight stitches and I basically I use I put all my live stitches on four needles and then the fifth needle this one here is my working needle sometimes I'll alternate and just use three uh, needles and then at other times I'll grab the fourth one and kinda knit like a square I'll knit in a circle but in a square shape if that makes sense so um, in terms of language, when you're talking about double pointed needles, if you haven't used them before, the area where the knitting comes together at the end of one needle and the beginning of another, that's called the join. At least that's how I call it. And that's the trickiest part of working with the double pointed needles in my mind. So, anyways, I'm not a fast knitter at all, but I'm comfortable with my own speed. I like to just knit so that it looks good and whatever speed that requires that's what I do. I'm not trying to be a speed demon here. So I really do knit very close to the tips. These tips are all this, if you get double pointed needles at this company the tips are all the same. They have a very fine point and, but they're not so pointy that you're at risk of pointing a hole in your finger, at least not me. And I let the needles just dangle in my hands. I, I don't get too worried about feeling awkward about all these needles sticking out of my knitting. I just work as if I'm dealing with two needles, honestly, and you just kind of get comfortable with the others just kind of hanging there all by themselves. If your knitting is firm enough, these needles will not go anywhere. They'll just stay there. <laughs> so it is a weird thing I remember the first time. I used double pointed needles. I I was so thoroughly frustrated that I couldn't cope after a few hours and I didn't try it again for over a year. But there's so many things you can't do without them. Well there's other way there's workarounds, but in my mind ultimately it's very nice and handy to be able to get comfortable with these. So this is the, the key part for me right here. This is the last stitch on the left needle. And I always so the left needle here is bumping up to the next needle here. I always try to treat it like a teepee. So you end up having three needles here and you just get used to holding these two together in your left hand. So I have them crossed here. They can, And then I just kind of have this little teepee effect and you do your last stitch like that and that prevents this last stitch from being stretched out. And then before I use a new working needle, I grab the next two stitches and that prevents these stitches from laddering, which is a term that refers to a long column of stitches that are knit too loosely because of the lack of tensioning at the, at the joints. Um, so, and then here we go again. So I grab the needle that's now available and use that as the new working needle. And we have a new TP right here. 
and I can just let this guy dangle on the right without having to hold him. Um, I scoop the needle up just a bit so there's no risk of these stitches from falling off. And here we go again. So it is, I'm a slow knitter. Uh, there's nothing speedy about my knitting. And I'm sure there are long time experienced knitters that can do this super fast. I'll just get to the next join before I end the video. Do you see how this needle is kind of sticking up? You can let it keep sticking up there and ignore it until you get to the, the end of the row. And there's a couple of ways you can ignore it. You can, uh, you can start kind of going like this, but you risk stretch, stretching your stitches out there or you can just push it down and then keep going. There's a lot of tiny little adjustments. So for example, this needle here is starting to bump up against my wrist. So just move it over here. And it's just sort of like the dance that your fingers do. All these little micro adjustments that you get used to and it just starts to feel like second nature. And before you know it, you're not even thinking about it, and it starts to feel comfortable and normal. So here we are at the last stitch, and we have our little teepee again. And this is how I prevent those stitches from getting stretched out, is I cope with the needles like that. And then sometimes a little ladder and your stitching can form, which would be a column of stitches that get very loose in the stitches where you have your two needles uh, meet together. Um, and so I'll try to demonstrate how that would work. So I would just, if I didn't, if I just started using the new working needle on these same stitches and every time the two needles met, <clears throat> I could possibly not tension this correctly and there would be a column of loose stitches that form. So to avoid that, instead of using the new working needle always at this area right here where the two needles meet, you would just use this needle here to do the next two stitches and it tends to prevent laddering and I uh, then I could pick up this needle and start going along. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Um, so this pattern calls for 30 stitches on the front and 30 stitches on the back. And because I constantly shifted over two, I never got laddering on this whole mitten. It's just nice, even knitting. There's no obvious area where I change to the new needle. When you look at it this way and when you look at it this way, there's a little bit of wonkiness there in here. So I haven't knit with these needles in a long time. but. Here I'm going to show you where the 30 stitches on the front and the 30 stitches on the back. I didn't do such a good job um, where the stitches meet on the side. This side looks okay, um, but this side got a little wonky. And that's because I didn't do the best job when I changed to the new color. And that's kind of another whole video, but you know, I'll show you on these. Uh, I didn't feel that I had any laddering, but this side came out really good in the back, in my mind. <laughs> I'm proud of myself with this, but you can see I, I have a lot of work to do when it comes to managing the color change so that my stitches are nice and even where the, ch the colors change on the new row. So my knitting is a little wonky there, so just kind of keep that in mind. I'll do another tutorial with this mitten when I get to the the, uh, the color change rows and kind of show you how to avoid that. So anyways, hope this helps people who are getting started with double pointed needles.